and got chopped in half by this and the swing arm when they met. Alright, so here is the part that got damaged. This is the rear brake line off the ABS unit. This sits on the motorcycle just like this. And see, this part here was somehow turned down like this on the caliper. Now, it naturally wants to sit like this, so I'm not sure why it turned. I didn't loosen it. We need to get this replaced today. These, I was told by the dealer that they were on back order till 8:21. Well, they're still on back order, so I can't just replace this. But when I replace this, I'm also going to have to bleed the brake line. I was able to go to the dealer and we were able to find a hose with a banjo in and then also another banjo in that fit the what is it? minus 3 line, I think they call it. So, we're going to be able to replace this today. Unfortunately, it's not black. All they had was silver, so I was hoping to get it replaced today, but I didn't want to wait for black because it's already been down almost another month. These are the parts we were able to get. The one end has a standard 10 millimeter banjo on it. I don't know the length. I got four new crush washers. Those are my existing banjo bolts. The black one is for the caliper. The silver one is for the ABS unit, and then that 90 degree banjo fitting. All right, so to get that line out of here, there is a plastic clip here that holds all the lines in place and kind of just keeps them where they should be. Now, because we're using a standard banjo fitting, we're not going to be able to keep that in place because the standard fitting is going to come off here, run this way down, loop around, and then come back up to the brake caliper. All right, so we're going to get this put on here on top like this. These should fit with your existing lines if you're just replacing one. Remember, I said that the silver, silver banjo goes on the ABS. Now we don't want to tighten this right now because we got to kind of train this line and we got to run it through here. It's going to be hard for me to get a shot for you guys. So we're going to have to run this line about like this and hopefully we can get this line to train itself. All right, for the caliper, we, like I said, we got the black banjo. These both should be 10 millimeter banjos. We'll see how we can run this. I may have to flip this banjo over. So I'm gonna put this on here quickly. See what we can get out of this thing. Cause we don't want, we don't want this line getting close to rubbing the tire and we need to get it in the holders so it stays in place, but we don't want it over far enough where it can ever end up getting cut here again. Okay, so what I had to do, we're running this straight out. It should not hit this bar, should not get pinched in between here, and then is running underneath the ABS back up and around, and I had to flip the top 180 degrees to get it to want to stay here instead of flopping out here into the, into the cover. Now I can get everything tight here. Sorry, uh, this is, a quick and dirty job. I don't have torque specs for you. There is the line around there. You can see it run, make a loop, and come back around up to the top. Everything is tight. Now it's time to get this bled. So we're going to have to crack open the reservoir up here, feed fresh fluid into there, through there. Now I don't have a way to ABS bleed. There's always the redneck way of uh, just ABS in the brakes and hoping that works. Okay, so to get the cover off, you're going to need your number two Phillips. Now remember, when you're dealing with brake fluid, you wanna have some sort of alcohol and water mix around. If you get this on the paint, it will eat your paint if it sits on there for long enough. The, the alcohol and water will neutralize the brake fluid and wash it away. Okay, so due to the length of this bike, where the brake caliper is at, where the front reservoir is at, this really isn't a one person job, even with a vacuum bleeder, because you're gonna have to keep an eye on here, making sure that the hose stays on the caliper. But right now that my snap-on uh, brake bleed tool is actually fitting on there nicely. I loosened it already. So I'm gonna start bleeding this and watching this reservoir and filling as needed. Now my brake fluid is long past two years, so I'm gonna to try to flush as much of this out as I can. Now we are still moving fluid. I can see it in the reservoir. Make sure that you do not let air enter that master cylinder or you're just fighting yourself. Now with it still going, you wanna shut this leader bolt. All right, so we're done, dirty. All I gotta do is put things back and put everything back on the bike and we're 
back on the road again. Now important part of this is you do want to check for leaks anywhere. Make sure that those little crush washers didn't get gouged or damaged in the process because that'll cause a leak. But that's it. We got the line installed. We got the brakes bled. We should be good to go. But you got to remember it's going through the ABS system. So if we have a problem with it or we have air trapped in the ABS, we may need to take it to the dealer to have them ABS brake bleed. Super simple on the DT2, but it's going to cost you a bit of money. Now, obviously you can see I got brake fluid on some of the painted surfaces, which was an accident. So I'll wash it off with my alcohol water mix. You want to try to get it off there as soon as possible. This one doesn't have a chance to eat at the paint. Yes, even powder coat. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And remember, if V-Twinkie, we build it to ride.